It's March break and over 100,000 people are flying away from the Toronto's deep freeze in search of warmer climates or sunny slopes. After two long years of construction, Humber North's new building gets its final touches. And protesters in Ferguson hold a candlelight vigil in the wake of the shooting of two police officers. Hi, and welcome to Humber News. I'm Casey Taylor, coming to you from our newsroom here at Humber College North Campus. It's the start of the busiest weekend at Canada's busiest airport. It's March break, and that means madness at Pearson International. Our reporter Marlon Gomez is there and joins us live. Hi Marlon, tell us what's going on. Hi Casey. So I'm between gate three and five. This is where most people come to check in for their domestic and international flights. So we already missed most of the big rush. Airport staff told me that happened between four and seven a.m. Things are looking pretty good and things are running smooth. I spoke to some families and students that were traveling earlier on. Here's what they had to say. This year we're bringing our uh, eastern skis because uh, we're going to go ski in the slush. Did you guys pick the afternoon just to try and miss all the morning chaos or it just kind of worked out? Absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> well, I get up early to get to 3,000 people all grumpy, so we decided to take the afternoon flight. Uh, our flight was delayed from 9.30 to 1.30, so we got to sleep in and relax, and uh, we still have another couple hours. So. We're going to France. Nice, and how long yeah, are you going for? Yeah, nine days. Uh, we're going to a cheese factory. Uh, we're going to see the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, you know, the touristy stuff. Nice. Yeah. So airport staff said today is actually supposed to be their busiest day. They're expecting 116,000 people to come through. That's an increase from the yearly average, which is about 100,000. So to help with all the extra traffic, there's uh, staff walking around wearing blue jackets that people can approach to help them deal with any confusions or any issues that they may be having. So if your flight doesn't actually leave until later on this weekend and you want to be as prepared as possible, here's something to keep in mind. Check in through the airline's online checking system. So you can actually go on there 24 hours prior to your flight and you can pick your seat. You can actually also pay for any bags that you're going to check. And then once you get here, all you do is come to one of these machines. You just print out your ticket for your luggage and then you just wait in line and wait for them to take your bag. And that's it. Away, to, away you go and then you can enjoy your trip. Reporting live from Toronto Pearson Airport, I'm Marlon Gomez, Humber News. Back to you, Casey. Thanks, Marlon. The new face of Humber College is just about ready for its close-up. The LRC should be open for business soon. Reporter Ainsley Smith has been checking it out and has this report. Construction of the Learning Resource Commons facility at the North Campus is almost near completion. With two of the three phases complete, Humber is expecting the LRC to officially <laughs> open its doors on April 1st. As you can see, construction is still undergoing at the LRC building, which is projected to be completed by March 31st. I couldn't obtain access to the inside of the LRC because Humber still doesn't own the rights to access the building until it is completed. This six-story building measures at 260,000 square feet and will be home to a variety of different student service centres. This will include testing services, an office of the registrar and much more. The Ontario government funded a majority of the cost to build the project, which estimated at $64.1 million. This new facility will help Humber achieve future growth by having space for 2,200 new students. Students will have access to a new library and student centre that will include a student showcase and an art gallery. I'm Ainsley Smith, Humber News. Reports today that we may finally be able to buy beer and wine in supermarkets. The province's Minister of Economic Development says the government is just waiting for final recommendations before moving ahead. The decision is supposed to be announced in the spring budget. The Toronto Star is reporting that hundreds of supermarkets will be allowed to sell wine, craft beer and major national brands. Last month, Premier Kathleen Wynne said the province was preparing changes to the way alcohol would be sold. Even with the changes, Wynne says beer sales will not be permitted in corner stores. The LCBO runs more than 600 stores province-wide, plus another 200 rural agents. In the wake of the Ferguson shooting of two policemen, protesters have come together in a peaceful ceremony. Protesters held a candlelight vigil last night as tensions continue to rise in the city. It was during a protest on Wednesday night that two officers were shot just outside police headquarters. Wednesday night's shooting triggered a manhunt for the suspects. 
The shooting happened shortly after Ferguson's police chief resigned. Both officers suffered minor wounds and have since been released from hospital. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is in Egypt, set to meet with President Sisi, Jordan's King Abdullah, and Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas. The meeting is expected to focus on security in neighboring Libya and the Sinai. Officials say Kerry won't pledge military assistance during the two-day trip, despite an earlier request from Egypt's president. Washington suspended its usual $1.5 billion transfer of military assistance back in 2013 to show it wasn't pleased after the ousting of former President Mohamed Morsi. Eight suspected Islamic militants were arrested by Spanish police early this morning. Police say the suspected planning an attack in Spain were found recruiting fighters to send to Syria and Iraq. The Spanish government is cracking down on any militant activities following the Charlie Hebdo attacks in January. So far this year, Spanish police have arrested 21 people found linked to Islamic militant behavior. Russian President Vladimir Putin is once again in the public eye. After speculation arose, he's been off the grid the past few days. Questions started when Putin canceled his trip to Kazakhstan and a meeting in Moscow. Rumors spread about the condition of his health and the recent killing of opposition figure Boris Nemtsov. The cancellation sparked debate in Russian mainstream organizations, but today he met with the president of the Supreme Court at his residence outside Moscow. Meanwhile, in southern Russia, pilots were practicing combat drills. The pilots were training to avoid anti-aircraft weaponry. The military maneuvers featured 100 pilots and technicians. They flew jets with upgraded navigation, fire control systems, and radar. Pilots also had a chance to fly the new jet simulator, which is the same planes used in the exercises. Swedish prosecutors have asked if they can question WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange in London, where he's being holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy since 2012. It's a breakthrough in a sexual assault case that's been stalled for years, and one Assange's lawyer is calling a victory. Uh, very happy. He said this is a great victory for me. I've been asking for this for over four years. At, at the same time, he was irritated that it took uh, Mary and I so long to understand that she had to do this. Prosecutors originally insisted Assange return to Stockholm for questioning about alleged assaults against two women back in 2010. He denies the allegations and has refused to go, saying Sweden could extradite him to the U.S., where he would face trial for publishing classified documents. The main reason behind the prosecutor's change of heart is a looming statute of limitations deadline. Even if the Swedish charges are dropped, Assange could still be arrested by British police for skipping bail while the UK decided whether or not to grant him asylum in the first place. When we come back, we'll tell you what's happening in the world of sports, and Abita Donji will have your three-day forecast. The snow is finally melting and the temperatures are getting a lot warmer. We have a high of five and a low of zero today. I'll be back with your full three-day forecast after the break. But first, a Japanese warship which sank in the Philippines during World War II has been found. Researchers commissioned by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen discovered the famed ship Musashi. They used an unmanned vehicle to take footage of the wreck located a kilometer underwater. The warship was one of the biggest battleships ever built and was sunk by U.S. aircraft killing more than a thousand Japanese crew. The team's discovery was broadcast live on Friday. Makes a lot of this. We, we think that we are conveying something, something to the world which is significant and it also teaches the world about the past and what happened. 